I want to say something about um, healthcare workers and the uh, pandemic and essential workers. If um, a worker who is being asked to work, you don't feel safe at work, you don't feel absolutely protected from the pandemic, the coronavirus. Don't work. Stay home. We are in the equivalent of a wartime situation. A healthcare worker. Yeah. So um, every essential worker and every uh, healthcare worker needs to look at, or I. You have the right to look at your job as something that could risk your life if it is asking you to do anything, to leave the house, to stand at a cash register without protective gear, to stand, to take money from people, credit cards, um, much less go in and treat a patient, go into a house of people that might be infected with this uh, virus. You are not obligated to risk your life just because circumstances in the world have changed such that your job is now a life-threatening, high-risk endeavor. Life-threatening, high-risk jobs deserve hazard pay. High pay for the high risk. Pay must match risk. If your pay does not match the level of risk you are asked to do, don't do it. You are not obligated to sacrifice yourself for the current structure of payment system. You have the right to demand protective gear or you have the right to adequate protection or if you are going to be asked to do work without adequate protection, you have the right to, um, like that was the same thing, adequate protection, adequate gear. You have the right to be paid for something matching the level of risk you are taking. If you don't agree to those terms, because the terms have radically changed, Tap out until the terms have become agreeable. There are people sitting at home right now who are willing to take risk if they are going to be paid adequately. So let them work. There are people that do not want to work if it risks their lives and the lives of their family. There should be no shame in them saying, I'm done, until the transaction, the deal that I'm being offered by uh, the company or the government that is asking me to work, until it matches what I'm being compensated. then you have no obligation to continue doing it. Now, if you do continue to do it because you care about people and you don't mind, you want to risk your life, and you're happy with the, um, that decision, you feel you have a, you feel you are, you see yourself more like a soldier, someone willing to die and risk your life on a regular high-risk basis for other people in your profession. That's your attitude towards your profession. That's great. That's your, your attitude towards your life every person's choice whether or not you risk your life to do anything. Not choosing to do so is reasonable. It's always reasonable. So, that's what I have to say. Everyone stay safe out there, practice social distancing. If you're in a state that is not shut down yet, pretend it is shut down. Every governor out there, every leader of every county, every health director of every county and city in the United States should be ashamed of themselves if they are not completely shut down right now. This is not that complicated a situation. We created a game right now called Global Pandemic and asked you, what is your move? You're the leader of a region. You could, step one, wait until 20 people in your region are infected. Or two, you could immediately order a shutdown of non-essential workers. Or three, you could immediately order everyone in your state to practice social distancing. Or four, you could order everyone in your state to wear masks if they go outside. Or five, you do all those things as early in the game as possible. And you stay that way 
until the wave of the pandemic passes, the first wave. And you see how bad the first wave impacted. It is a slow motion wave that's hitting our country. At least it seems slow motion to the parts of the country that are not in the middle of the maelstrom right now, but New York and other places are. If you're paying attention, if you're a leader and you have power, pay attention. Shut down. Freeze everything. Let's see how the first wave hits over the next two months. Then reevaluate. We should achieve we should be focusing massive efforts on universal testing. The only way to get ahead of this is to get to a point where we can over-test and over-surveil everyone, everywhere, entire town, maybe on a weekly basis. There's some company that says they can do a five-minute test, make that available everywhere, figure out using the Defense Production Act to produce all the protective gear, all the reagents you need for testing, all the testing equipment, Mobilize like it's a war effort, focus on the vaccinations, do what Bill Gates said, and start building facilities to create these vaccines. Build a facility for each candidate vaccine that looks most promising so that the facility is ready if the candidate vaccine is uh, considered viable and you want to start taking it worldwide. Because the minute a vaccine is available, it's going to need to be produced and distributed all over Earth. And then we're going to have to figure out a way to do that, perhaps every year, every season, if it comes back on a seasonal basis. Heck, it could come back more frequently than that. Alright, uh, now is that enough for now? Take care.